All right, let's bring some people on board. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> How's it going? Um, gonna bring in one more. There we go, Brandon. All right, yeah. How's it going? How is everybody? Well, How are you guys doing? So good. I can hear everybody. Doing great. <laughs> That's good. <it. laughs> we got Brandon up and running. Yeah. So today, today we're going to be talking about the wave of people switching from either Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro to DaVinci Resolve and um, waiting on one more person to come uh, that is a DaVinci Resolve uh, kind of guru in the space. Um, hopefully he shows up. Oh, maybe I should have sent him a link. That would have been a good idea. What am I doing? <laughs> Swing so, and a miss. <laughs> that's right. I forgot that he's now part of the um, the the Discord. Yeah. The chat. Yeah, that's right. That's just me missing that. Okay, so you guys. So here's the first question. I'm going to post the first question, and then I'm going to um, send that link out. Um, yeah. So I know you guys are using Final Cut Pro mostly. But has there been a temptation to use DaVinci Resolve? And have you at least stepped into it for a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Who's going first? <laughs> Brandon, go. Oh, am I going? Crap, I'm still tweaking with settings and stuff. Right, yeah, I, 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 I have definitely thought about moving to DaVinci Resolve. But then I opened it up and it just it smothered me with complexity and there was too many things to click on and I just got scared and ran away. <laughs> yeah, I made a recent video yeah. uh, about cheating on Final Cut Pro with DaVinci Resolve. I've been using DaVinci Resolve in my uh, post-production workflow, not as a YouTube creator, but as a post-production supervisor with a small production company here in Omaha on some of my client work. Uh, I haven't been using it for editing, but getting my edits from Final Cut Pro into DaVinci Resolve um, called Turnover for color grading with my colorist friend Cody, who appears on my channel pretty regularly. Um, so I have used DaVinci Resolve for that. I've also used DaVinci Resolve to make like a film festival DCP file for a film that's playing at like a movie theater on like an actual movie theater digital camera. So plenty of familiarity with it there, but not really doing anything on the editing side. And when I made that video cheating on Final Cut Pro and tried editing in the edit page, not the cut page that has more magnetic timeline like properties, uh, it was fairly unpleasant, but I was also missing a lot of the basic understanding of the keyboard shortcuts that allow you to kind of ripple delete and do all those things. So to answer the question, I have not been tempted to switch, but I've been tempted to play around with it just for the fun of making content and kind of screwing around, understanding what the other options are and kind of getting into the headspace of the people that are either switching or considering switching. Yeah, I must say I feel the same way in a lot of ways. I haven't felt, felt tempted to switch, but I definitely feel tempted to play around. I haven't done that yet. I think I just don't have the time. But uh, I saw Sam Calder's video and I saw what he was doing and I was just like, wow, I need to take it seriously and spend some time in it. But I just haven't found the time to do it yet. So I'll chime in here. I actually started on Resolve and then switched to Final Cut. So I'm probably in the minority. Um, <laughs> and so that gives me, I think, kind of a unique perspective. But um, I switched to Final Cut because uh, I purchased a Mac at the time. I wasn't a Mac user before. And I was like, I'll give it a try. And after using it a few times, I got hooked. For me personally, it's just, it's all about speed. And, you know, for the stuff that I'm doing, the faster I can edit, the faster I can get uh, content made is better. Um, I'm not really like super limited by the grading. I'm not like a super advanced colorist. Uh, I actually keep putting my toe in the water and trying resolve. And I'm just like, yeah, no, like I just, <laughs> like, I'd have to sacrifice quite a bit of time getting back into the workflow. I couldn't even like I opened it up and I was like, I don't even know how to do this anymore, which is weird because I used to edit all my videos in it. So I don't know. If you're not getting the results you're looking for, then maybe look for a different piece of software. But for what I do, Final Cut's working great. Yeah, there's a, a very serious FOMO, that's for sure. You're seeing all the cool AI features that Resolve is getting. And you got cool people like Patrick who are teaching it. And it's like, man, What's I want to be part of that crew. Glad Patrick can make it. He's probably feeling a little intimidated with so many Final Cut users sitting in this one one spot. But uh, 
But man, hey, hey. Resolve, they're they're hitting their stride, and uh, it's really cool to see the tools that they're bringing to the space. Um, but I personally, I haven't been tempted so much as to switch like a lot of you guys. It's more so how can I integrate Resolve in with my Final Cut workflow? Because I see the color tools, I'm like, man, those are amazing. I'm seeing Fusion. And I'm really hoping that maybe I can learn Fusion well enough to never touch After Effects again in my life. We'll see if I ever get there. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, it's not so much am I going to switch, it's how can I use both to the best of their advantages and really boost up my workflow by having tools that, that work for me that I can edit at the speed of thought and then I can get in and really fine tune for a documentary or narrative project or something like that using resolve to get those those finishing touches so that's kind of been my perspective and um i'm just i'm really excited to see the the love that resolve is getting and it's cool to see a lot of new creators coming out of that too with it having its free plan i think that's so cool and i mean the more creators out there the better so that's that's been my perspective So to just kind of um, anchor on all those points, like everybody that I've been noticing has been switching to DaVinci Resolve and there has already been a huge influx of people going, how do I do this? How do I do that? And there's so many questions that are being posed onto like the simple things that should, that were simple in the other programs for them. There is this already that backlog, that learning curve that I kind of chatted about. And another big thing that comes up is that the free version of DaVinci Resolve doesn't do HDR or 10-bit video. And a lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, why can't I do my 10-bit uh, Sony footage? Why doesn't my uh, iPhone footage work? Which is the people that are going to be using the, the free version of it. So they have to down convert and they, they kind of bump into that that backlog so have you guys found that same kind of process where you dip your toes in but it's like well this is a bit more complicated than i expected and it's not as a simple transition so then it comes down to will you dedicate the time to actually get good at those things I think for me, just the fact that I'm focused on content creation with YouTube, like I'm not in intensive um, narrative, short film, um, feature length documentary workflows that require um, uh, heavy turnover, whether it's sound or um, or color. Uh, with Resolve, obviously, turnover is a whole different ball game if you've edited your film uh, or whatever you're working on because you can just move everything over to uh, the color page or Fairlight. It is Fairlight, right, to do audio. Um, but really, for me, it's just the fact that I'm, you know, mostly doing YouTube content. There's just the tools in Final Cut Pro cover what I need. I don't enjoy color grading. I don't like color grading at all. So if I need to do it, I'm going to hand it off to a colorist. If it's for one of my videos, I'm just like, uh, good enough. You know, you can see that through in the uh, the inconsistency in a lot of my videos. Sometimes a little too cool, sometimes a little too warm, sometimes a little this, a little that. Like, I, I, I hate color grading. I, I have no desire to do it. Um, so Preach. those tools in DaVinci Resolve just make me make make me even more intimidated and more uh, uninterested in, in, in learning them. Um, so that that's really the big thing for me. And I think that's a big thing for this whole conversation is for all of us primarily. And I know, Dylan, you're working on um, client projects. I've done a few. Brad, you do client projects. Josh, you've got your real estate work. But for the most part, Final Cut Pro handles everything that we need. Um, and for me personally, when it doesn't, I hire somebody to take care of the color, the sound, whatever. I don't want to learn that stuff. So, so there's a question. If Final Cut Pro would have better color grading tools, would would any of this be a, a thought? Like if there was, if no. if the tools are already there, you would still keep yourself limited to just uh, understanding the basics. I, I'm the same way. I understand it, but then when I sit down with someone that really knows 
like color theory and how to manipulate and use the tool properly, I'm just kind of saying like, wow, like this is amazing. And I think a lot of people kind of assume that they're going to open up DaVinci Resolve and just be like, well, now I'm a color grading master because I'm using DaVinci no. Resolve. <laughs> and it's just like, and then you look at it and you're like, wow, this is like, it. it's like, there's a difference between messing around with it and just doing a base grade and kind of having fun with it versus what the, the guys that actually know, girls to uh, the, the people that know what they're doing, like they make it look easy, but then when you try to recreate what they're doing, you just like, it's, it gets lost. It's like trying to figure out a Rubik's Cube and you've never uh, uh, played with one before. That's the way I kind of feel about it. Well, and I yeah, love I think sitting a... down with a colorist, like, like actually sitting in the color suite and talking about, oh, can we power window that stuff? It's a little too bright. Let's focus the eye here. Can we do a little bit more color contrast? You know, like I like kind of directing a color grade, but I don't want to learn the tools to do it myself. Yeah, and I think there's a really steep learning curve, at least from what I've seen um, in getting like stuck into Resolve and really getting good results. I don't think it's something that you can just spend an afternoon and be like, okay, cool. I know exactly how resolve works and I can get great results. Um, I think it's something that you really have to commit some time to, which is I think a challenge for some of us here who have like tons of client work and need to turn things around really quickly to sit and spend days or weeks trying to master something in resolve is uh, probably one of the things that stops me personally from trying to give, you know, give it a good chance and maybe switch. Um, I'm just, I've got such a good workflow going in Final Cut and I can do things so quickly. Resolve, I think, you know, there's a learning curve there because it's, it's so powerful and there's so much you can do. Resolve is super powerful. It's a fantastic tool. And just a, a little background on, on me. I use all the apps and in a professional setting. So I've used them quite a bit. Am I a master at you know any of them? No, I wouldn't say that like I would just focus on one because that's my uh, that's my strength. But they all have their really dedicated purpose uh, purpose. Yes, is that the word? Yeah. Um, and the things that they're really good at. So it's almost when I start a project, I'm like, which project will this project fit into the tool the best? So, um, and I know that I'm probably the one of the only ones that jumps from project to project using different tools, but it's really the skill set that you bring with you. It's not the tool that you can bring with you to make you better. Like if you understand the fundamentals of editing, of color grading, of audio, of any of those tools, um, like the modality won't matter which tool you use because then it's just a matter of the buttons that you're pushing and in which order. So um, that's why when Sam Colder did his video, his launch video, like he already has the talent baked into him. So he can go to Avid and After Effects, he can go to Nuke, he can go to any of those and just, he knows what he wants to accomplish and then he just finds the path to get there. So if DaVinci Resolve is that tool that will help you find that path, then use that tool. But like, it's not gonna make you better unless you actually sit and understand why you're doing the things you're doing and how. Um, so just because you can slap on a preset or an effect or whatever, that's not gonna make your video a Sam Colder video, right? Like he has a style and people hire him for his style, not because he uses DaVinci Resolve. Just like most people don't get hired for the camera that they're using, because then you're kind of getting, you're, you're just renting your gear and you're there pushing the buttons that, that people want. Well, I, I think this kind of brings up a bigger Sam question Colder too. Preset. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say, I feel like this brings up the bigger question, especially with the advent of YouTube since 2006 and what we call YouTube University and people being self-taught about filmmaking and learning how to create on their own. With me having come up through film school in 2006 through 2008, we learned that film can be and usually is, and I mean narrative film, traditional feature film, is a collaborative art form, both on set and in post-production. You are relying on a crew of people who are experts in what they do, whether it's Best Boy Electric, um, it's a key grip, it's a gaffer, and they bring 
like they've devoted their life to that skill and they bring that to set. Same thing in post-production, colorist, sound effects editors, audio mixing, all that stuff. And you are all working together to create the final product. With the democratization of that process, digital cameras, digital post-production, all of that, we can now, if we want to, do most of that ourselves on the post-production side. And I think that's really the the kind of the 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 dividing line between the schools of thought. Are you going to embrace creating something as a collaborative effort? And I prefer to do it that way where I don't want to learn how to color grade. I don't want to learn how to do audio mixing. I don't want to learn those skills. I want to have the resources to be able to bring those people into the mix so that we can all do it together. I like doing it together. I personally like working with a producer or managing those projects myself through the post-production pipeline, the production pipeline, all of that. So it's strange to me to work in isolation as a YouTube content creator, filming, editing, um, do, you know, coloring my videos, doing all that stuff all by myself. I would much rather do it with a bunch of other people. Um, and someone like Sam Colder, you know, some of these people are so skilled in everything they do. They know how to audio mix. They know how to sound effects edit, do visual effects. They know how to color grade. They know how to edit. Uh, I feel like those are outliers. And for the for the majority of us, um, we need help. <laughs> and that's what YouTube's great for, getting that help. So let's take it from a YouTube only standpoint. How, how would it help in that case where everyone has to do everything? Where they have to be the colorist, they have to be the, the sound engineer, they have to be the graphic designer. Would, is that a case for DaVinci Resolve? Because, uh, and not only that, they also need to make sure that their costs are as small as possible. Like, would, it, would you recommend at that point, like maybe learn DaVinci Resolve, but really dive deep into it, learn it. And then that will be that will help you create all the things you want. You'll sound great. You'll look great. Uh, whatever you do on it, you're going to be able to achieve those things. But you're going to have to learn those things. So maybe like from like because you and I both went to film school. So you you and I both have that mentality of we work with a team. Like when it's a creative project and we know the scope of it, we're like, well, we need to bring in these people because they're really good at what they do. And if we want the project to be as good as it is, I don't want to spend three years learning that process where they've already done that. I can just direct them and say, this is what I'm looking for. This is what the client needs. This is, you know, like you, you're able to just communicate. But from a, if I was just doing YouTube solo without that background, that's where, you know, the, the learning curve, what I always talk about becomes so important. Are you willing to take the time to learn all those modalities? I mean, for me, I think it depends on what kind of YouTuber you are. If you're a person making makeup tutorials, no, it doesn't. I'd rather do the thing that's fast and efficient that has, you know, an easier learning curve. But I guess if you're a filmmaker trying to be a YouTuber, DaVinci's probably the, the smart bet. So I uh, ask Patrick, can you hear us? <laughs> yes, I'm in now. We're good. All right. So Patrick, just give us a, a little background on who you are and uh, your extensive knowledge in uh, DaVinci Resolve. Um, if, if you guys haven't checked out uh, Patrick's channel, he does. If you want to learn DaVinci Resolve, he's probably the first place that you should stop. Uh, I remember the very first video that I watched from you. It was the um the pixel shifter video the plugin that you did for it or and how it almost broke your computer because it was it was just so intensive but uh after that it's just yeah anytime i had a question it's like i checked your your channel uh jamie fern i think is the other one uh casey ferris or the the other one alex um mr alex, mr. alex tech. tech yeah yeah like those, those are huge you uh da vinci resolve youtubers so yeah if um Give a little bit of background and then, yeah, jump in from your perspective on DaVinci Resolve. Uh, on everything. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, right now uh, I'm running a channel mostly about Resolve and even pretty specifically inside Resolve because there's like 
12 different pieces of software inside Resolve. Um, I'm really focused on the Fusion page. Um, and even within that, you know, Fusion is this, is this giant thing. Um, I'm really focused on motion graphics and then sort of inside that um, uh, presets and plugins and templates, um, building those in Fusion, kicking them over to the edit page. Um, I call, I use all those words pretty interchangeably. Um, the plugins, the things I've made that I've called plugins are all completely made inside Resolve. Like I'm not coding a plugin. I'm just making something in Fusion and there is a very simple system in place for packaging that up, kicking it over to the edit page, um, which is one of the first things that really hooked me. Um, I, you know, I got into video in school. Um, I was always pursuing like motion graphics, After Effects alongside editing. Um, so I was in After Effects for a while there. Um, I, always a bit more on like the technical side than like designer side. It's hard to make something look good, but if someone gives me something that looks good, most of the time I can make it move all right. Um, and then I, I was working at like a super small uh, like marketing agency. I wanted to start taking color more seriously, like a lot of people that dive into Resolve. So I was like, okay, I'll get into Resolve. Um, and then like there was just the edit page sitting there and I was like, I, why, why am I round tripping? When like I'm not doing any crazy edit stuff. Um, and it really only took like one or two projects that were really giving me a hard time in Premiere. There's like, I, for what I am doing in Premiere, I can seamlessly transition to the edit page. Um, and I, th I think for a lot of people, especially coming from Premiere, which I know is a very different situation, but especially coming from Premiere, you're, you're going to have a great time getting up to speed on the edit page, I feel like. Yeah. Um, things will be in a different location. There'll be muscle memory. You can change over your shortcuts. Um, frustrations. Um, on, on that frustration note, I think while a lot of us realize it's, it's good to learn multiple programs, if we are in one program for a while, it's very easy to forget how hard it is to learn something new in general. So I think sometimes things feel unintuitive when it's just like not the one way you've been doing it for a few years, which is more just like a little soapbox I have. Um, but got into that, uh, yeah, Premiere to Resolve, you can have a great time. After Effects to Fusion is a different, is a different beast. Um, but like, I think maybe being a little more technically minded, like I fusion works for me. Like once a few things click, um, much more often in fusion, um, like I would be in after effects. I would have an idea of being like, Hmm, if I take this, if I do this, if I rig this together, will this work 50, 50 shot of whether it'll work or not. Um, but when you get into, <laughs> um, when you get into fusion, you just understand the systems first. And then it's just like plugging systems into each other in different ways. Um, and they, it's pretty fun. And, you know, it's new. It's exciting. It's growing. That's a growing market, especially on the preset and plug-in and stuff side. So uh, I'm plugging away, but it's fun. Well, one of the things that I, I run into a lot and a lot of people ask me questions about um, is the node-based color grading and also graphic, uh, the Fusion page, where everything is node-based. And it's really good once you're able to wrap your head around it. But as you said, coming from After Effects or even Motion to Fusion, like those are three different ways of thinking mm -hmm. where Motion is kind of this like uh, layer stacked, but it's also has this, it has this incredible backend, but it, it feels too simplified when you're trying to think of complex things. That's the way I always thought about it. I, I've mm -hmm. never been able to figure out motion. I use After Effects and I've been using After Effects since like 99, like literally over 20 years. So I'm layer based when it comes to that. Uh, I have, I was using Fusion even before it got bought out by Blackmagic. Um, we were using it at a studio that we were working on. We're doing a lot of uh, high-end commercial stuff. Um, we switched over to Shake and to new, Nuke afterwards, so I'm familiar with Node-based, but it's always the one that slows me down. And and it, it really comes down to, I've, I haven't been able to figure out like how in After Effects you can put a, a nested pre-comp and then that 
can transition to an alpha channel into the next one. You can just see where it's going. I've never been able to mimic that workflow in DaVinci Resolve clearly. Because it's always been, you work on one shot, and then you move on to the next one. And they're independent things. It's, it's hard to kind of layer, like this one needs to bleed over to the next one. I've never been able to figure out a, and I know there's probably a way to do it. I just, it's not something that my mind is able to work, like where you have everything working and then um, the video stops and then it just becomes alpha channel for the last you know 15 frames where then it transitions to the next one because that element needs to continue. So like, just doing the motion graphics from any of these standpoints, Final Cut kind of is the weakest link in all of them because people have a hard time, if people have a hard time learning Final Cut, motion is like 10 times harder to try to learn. But I guess the, the same can be said for Fusion and for After Effects. And that's why so many people get hung up. Like they're, they're doing all the edit stuff and then they skip over the fusion page, like it doesn't even exist. Like it's just like, what's that? Uh, never mind. And then they go to the color page and they're like, they do one node and then they go to Fairlight and they go tweak the audio and then they, they go on. It's just like, they don't even utilize how, or even realize how powerful these tools can be. And they don't spend enough time in them to then elevate their projects. And then they ask themselves like, why doesn't my project look like a Sam Colder project? Well, you need to spend more time in these other two huge tabs that are in DaVinci Resolve. Push the Sam Colder button and it'll mm -hmm. fix it. Right. Yeah, just yeah. Yeah. All, all good. For a thousand dollars, you can be just like him. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to give an analogy uh, with cameras because that's my world. And like people think if you buy an expensive camera, you buy a cinema camera, then your stuff is going to look amazing. And like you guys were saying, it's the person that's using the tools. And if you give Resolve or Final Cut to a colorist, like they're gonna make it look good regardless because it's the person that's working those things. So I think there's that trap that a lot of people fall into watching YouTube videos like, oh, this guy uses that camera. So, oh, look, it's raining. <laughs> so, sorry, I've been playing with Cody, something. That's Cody a... dropped a super chat. Yeah, Thanks, thank you, Cody. Yeah, no, I, I wanted a way to let people know that a super chat has come through more than just saying thank you. So, Cody, thank you for that. That's, uh, that's awesome. I appreciate that. That one worked. <laughs> yeah. Tell, tell Cody to jump in. He's got the link in the Discord. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, Cody, anyway. if you want, you're... <laughs> you're uh you're more than welcome to join you're it's an open invite to everyone on that discord so yeah there's a link in the live stream uh section so come Channel. on in yeah yeah share your thoughts sorry josh uh, we got the the, the raining money <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i got cut off by cody thanks dude um <laughs> so, I, I, think, I think it's true though what i see from people and they buy these expensive cameras there is a higher ceiling right because you can get to a level where you can appreciate those extra features and the quality. But for most people who are getting started or intermediates, like you don't need those cameras. And I'm not saying you don't need Resolve, but for most people, like what we're talking about here, you can get what you need to get done. I can get, I can't say for everybody, but like I've learned to do that. And I still feel like I'm, I haven't maxed out the color grading in Final Cut because I'm not great at it. Do I wish it had things like color space transform? Absolutely. That would be a huge thing I'd like to see. I also think it's important to think about what feels good for you. And I think of that a lot about cameras too, where just because a camera might be spec higher, if it doesn't motivate you, excite you, get you using the camera or editing, like if you open up Resolve and you're just like battling with it, or you're opening up Premiere or Final Cut, whatever you're, if, it, if the friction is there, like use something else, use whatever allows you to create the easiest way possible. That's what I have to say. <laughs> yeah. One I also, thing... oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Well, one thing you said, um, because while, I mean, lots of people say Resolve has a steep learning curve, and I think specific areas absolutely can, but I think especially if you're getting into Resolve, you want to edit a video. I much prefer saying, like, Resolve doesn't have a steep learning curve, it has a high skill ceiling, where, like, you can go in-depth in just about every area and spend a lot of time and, like, get, honestly, just, like, a proficient and it, it's like that gets a little more to like the design ethos of Resolve, where like these pages 
um, like are meant to be the best workspace, not just for that work, but for like the kind of person doing that work. So like a colorist, like a, a pro colorist will want the color page like it is to do that color work and same on Fairlight. And like that gets like some of the, like community often comes back in and says they want, you know, all of Premiere's undockables and like build one page that has like all these pages pulled in. And I don't want that. And I don't think it's going to happen because that's like, like, yeah, I think people think they want customization more than they really do. But, oh yeah, j um, just that note of like, the, the skill ceiling is a really important part of that across gear and stuff as well. Well, I found that um, especially a lot of people that are, they have the money to spend on higher gear. So like, let's say a camera and they buy the more expensive camera. One thing that they always run into, especially when they're not that skilled or that ready to use that kind of camera is that they don't want to use it. They don't bring it with them. They, they have this fear of like, oh, it's too expensive. So they leave it and then they don't use it. Um, and I think DaVinci Resolve kind of falls in that same place where it has so many features where people just become afraid of using it because they're like, oh, I'm, I'm not ready to use it. I'm, I'm going to just leave it there. And it's not a bad thing because if they do use it and they do start playing around with it, even in the safety of their own home so they don't use it for projects uh, or the cameras outside, it does give them that option like when they're ready they'll start doing it because when you're motivated to do something, you'll easily pick up that tool and be like, oh, what does this button do? What does that button do? And that is literally the best way to learn. Like, I, I don't think I've ever learned anything by sitting through a four hour course and then going, okay, now I'm ready to do whatever. No, it's literally like, how do I do this one very specific thing that I need to accomplish right now? And then you search for that thing and chances are someone has a similar question or you can find a way to do that. And then once you figure that out, there's always a process of how many steps you have to do and how do you, how do you kind of cobble it together. But in the learning of that one thing, you've probably learned 10 other basic things that you didn't need to sit through a four hour course to learn. Like there's the, the first hour where it's like, learn the basics, learn what this is, learn what that is, you know, the naming and where the effects are and how to add them and like learn that. But when you try to figure out the entire app before you've made your first piece of content, it, you're, you're at the wrong end of the spectrum. Like open it up and literally start clicking buttons. You're not going to break it. You can always just start another project. Like just click buttons, see what they do, drag stuff, move stuff, break it. Like try to figure out what that does. I remember Andrew Kramer had um, a thing where he would literally focus on one effect that was in the After Effects library and go, we're making an effect with this one effect. Like he went through all of them and he figured out what they can do. And people are like, oh shit, you can do that with that? So I think that's how people need to approach DaVinci Resolve, like push the buttons, move stuff around, see how it affects your footage, see how it's, it moves stuff around. Like it's the only way to, after a year's worth, be like, oh, you're actually really good at that. It's the only way. Yeah, that that feels, especially more on the After Effects Fusion side, that feels like, like the main ethos of like online tutorials, right? Like, hey, Andrew Kramer can teach me how to make it look like my friend got hit by a car, but I'm gonna learn a lot about masking. I'm gonna learn some stuff about tracking and then like, you know, you just you just trick your audience into learning stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, you're you're muted. You're muted. I think I think something that's really interesting about Resolve that I've um, that 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 I've liked seeing, even with like um, uh, Adobe Rush or Premiere Rush, whatever they call it, and the cut page in Resolve, is to me like a validation of what Apple did with Final Cut Pro and the understanding that these applications in particular want to try to access a wider spectrum of users, especially those content creators that are creating short form social, long form social like we do. Um, and the cut page 
when uh, when I made my cheating on Final Cut with Resolve video, I got a lot of comments about why aren't you doing this first cut in the cut page where you have some magnetic timeline like properties, especially these updates from 18.5 where um, they let you toggle um, uh, ripple on and off, J and L cuts for your audio. Um, you can really see that they're trying to embrace some of these concepts that Apple came up with with Final Cut Pro. Um, uh, and I think on the other side, for those of us in Final Cut that are hoping for higher end, more, more uh, what would you say, Patrick, um, a higher skill ceiling, I think that's the frustration with Final Cut Pro is that skill ceiling is lower than it is in Resolve. And you can't make it as pro or simple as you'd like Whereas now with Resolve, you're seeing such a wide spectrum. You can make, keep it simple with the cut page, and I'm speaking mostly of just editing, or you can really get it complicated. And I'll give you an example just real quick to close things out on this comment. I edited a feature documentary a few years ago, and it had to be uploaded to Amazon, and they needed the final export to be in 23976, 23.976 frames per second. So I export it in Final Cut Pro at 23.98, thinking they're just rounding it to 23.98 because it's just easier in the, G, in, the, in the user interface to have it be 23.98. Nope, Amazon kept rejecting my export over and over and over. And I'm like, what is the problem? And it ended up being that, yes, Final Cut Pro exports in 23.98, not 23.976. So what did I have to do? I had to move it all over to Resolve export it in 23976 and then Amazon went, yeah, great, we love it, no problem. And that's, I think that to me, that defined the frustration that a lot of us have with Final Cut. When we need to do something pro, like give a final video file to Amazon to stream it to millions of people all over the country, you can't do it, uh, but Resolve can. Uh, and, and for us, we want Final Cut to just embrace some of these things, color space transform, um, 23976, some of these these more pro things to, to, to raise that skill ceiling and put it more on par with some of these apps like Resolve. I think that's like really interesting because sometimes it's been hard to tell in the development of Resolve if, and you know, if, if Blackmagic has a preference like there's a lot of pro people out there color grading and all this other stuff. And then there's going to be a lot more people picking up Resolve for it's free and editing stuff for TikTok and YouTube. And, you know, sometimes, you know, they toss in like a boring detector on the cut page and all the pros are like, this is the worst thing ever. And like, sometimes they like put out a feature that is so like niche for pros, but they'll absolutely love a lot of the, they added some more like remote monitoring features in 18.5. Mm -hmm that like, that won't be something I use. Um, but I, I was in the session um, when they talked about it in NAB and the people there who were pros were like, this is incredible. And like all, all this <laughs> stuff. And they even, so they rolled out like direct uploading to TikTok. And like to get that, like Blackmagic worked with TikTok as a company to develop the API. So it's mm. like they, so, uh, I, I don't feel like they, like, it kind of looks like want, they want to do everything, which feels like that's a lot to do everything. But like, if you are actively doing things, like they're not shoehorning themselves into like any one small area, and like it feels like it's gonna keep paying off for a while. So uh, I just want to add to that because. Uh, two things. One, for Matthew, uh, I had the same uh, similar scenario where um, we were delivering a documentary and there was one clip that was, um, it was interlaced. Like it was an archival clip, but it was interlaced. And yeah. it just, we were using Premiere at the time uh, for the documentary and the it was an interlaced clip and they kept rejecting it because of that technical issue. And that was the first time I bought DaVinci Resolve, like Studio, because I've been using it for um, since 2016. And I bought Studio because it had a de-interlace feature in it. And 
and then solve the issue right away and it just it worked. I mean, this is something that wasn't available through any other software at the time. Um, but it's again, it's that thing where it's like it's in that pro level. And um, Patrick, to your point, where DaVinci Resolve is trying to do stuff for everybody, and they have a game plan. There is a method to this madness. The pros that are using DaVinci Resolve will continue using DaVinci Resolve because there isn't anything better until you get to the the crazy high uh, specked out and very bespoke um, solutions out there. But the the mid tier agencies and the production companies, mid to high tier, they're, they're using DaVinci Resolve because it allows them to do collaborative work. The, the feature of being able to do remote uh, viewing uh, through secure channels is huge. Like, because, you know, it's all about proprietary, it's all about, you know, keeping secrets and you know who's watching it, you know, you're sharing the link that's, you know, through a private server, it's not going through these open kind of backend uh, streaming software. So, and it's kind of peer to peer. So the fidelity is, is better, the latency is better because you're going one to one. But their madness, or their, yeah, their madness of trying to add in TikTok and all this kind of stuff is they, they're a hardware company first, very similar to Apple, but they are a pro hardware company. And they know that the next generation of creators are coming and they need to get them hooked onto a piece of software that does the things that is simple for them. So when they reach that point where it's like, ooh, I just need this little bit extra horsepower or this extra feature, well, it's already there. They just use it within the software. And I kind of made a video about two years ago saying that we're going to be in this space, that DaVinci Resolve is going to be the, the, the dominant player. And it's like, it's, it's coming to eat everybody's lunch. Um, and we're at that point because so many smaller creators, like I, I don't even think two years ago, people would realize how important short form content is. But now all these apps have adopted it because these are the next generation of creators and they're going to get better and better. Like if I, if, if we were able to go back and be 12, 13, 14 years old and we had DaVinci Resolve on our computer and our phones, like, like our, yeah, our minds would be like, like, like it, it means nothing now. Cause like my, my daughter, my 11 year old, 12 year old daughter now is, is she's played with it. And it's like, oh, this is cool. I'm like, cool. You have any idea how amazing this is? If I was your, and like, anyways, it's just like an old man yelling at cloud thing. That's what I felt like. <laughs> But yeah, it's like in the next five years, it's just going to be more and more of a prominent feature in all of these new studios and all these new agencies are going to be popping up and the, the resume requirement is going to be not Adobe products, but DaVinci Resolve and you know Photoshop. It would be like the, 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 the two things. So that's my little rant on, on those things where <laughs> it's great for professionals but they know where they're going with the entry level people. There's, there's a reason for it. Well, and, and for people like me, who the thing that I care about most is the craft of editing. It is taking the coverage, the shots that we have from whatever we shot and ordering them in a way that creates an emotional response in your audience, whether it's telling a story, giving a vibe, you know, whatever it is. And, I feel like with applications like DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, they're, while they're capable of doing that using a track-based NLE, they're also incredibly overwhelming um, visually, uh, technically for me. And I know I can learn them, but all I care about is arranging clips on a timeline. And when it comes to that, and, and I'm talking about like when people edited film and they hung all the film strips up on a clip uh, up on clips and they arranged that footage they weren't messing with sound they weren't messing with color timing they were just arranging the clips to communicate and convey meaning i feel like final cut pro is the best software for that hands down sure it doesn't do 23976 it doesn't do um, color space transforms all of that stuff got piled onto the craft of editing when things turned really technical and more engineering based with video interlacing, de-interlacing, all of that stuff. 
when you go back to just what editing was telling the story with motion pictures, um, it was much simpler. And that's why I love Final Cut Pro. Um, and I love that Resolve is embracing the cut page because I think they're moving in that direction. Like, how can we just allow people to more easily arrange images to communicate meaning, tell a story, all of that? Um, I know that even if I switched to DaVinci Resolve, I would never use Fairlight. I would probably never do anything in the with the color grading tools except maybe some basic, you know, lift gamma gain, a little bit of a color temperature shift, maybe some tint sliders. Like, I wouldn't mess with any of that stuff because because why raf i'd get it right in camera and then finesse it in post right that's right <laughs> absolutely um, but 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 that to me is 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 part of this conversation resolve or final cut or other nles or even ai coming in and saying we'll arrange your clips for you and then we'll we'll let you kind of do that final polish to get it the way that you want it i think people want the technical and the complexity to get out of the way so they can be in that flow state and just put the images in the order that they need them to communicate that meaning. Um, obviously, sound, score, sound effects, all of that plays a huge part in that. But the most important part is getting the sequence of images right. Absolutely. And it, I think a lot of people miss out or kind of misunderstand the the power of a simple even a simple edit it doesn't need to be flashy and crazy to have an impact like it could if you're just going for retention sure just keep going where everything's just moving nonstop and it's like wait and then you're like what just happened <laughs> and you're like you're lost like like I don't like those kind of videos and I know that you know if your target audience is a younger generation who's just used to that, that's fine. But if you're actually trying to make something impactful that will last, that will supersede these trends of these kind of crazy edits, like a really well edited piece that is exactly what it needs to be, will last and be still be relevant three, five, 10, 50 years from now, where something that just a flashy and it's a, a trend of, of an edit then someone's going to watch you and be like, yeah, that's from that era. Like it's just, you're dating yourself by doing mm -hmm. it with a, with a trend. And I, I just uh, took my daughter to the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi and it held up like a 40 year old movie. She's seven years old and loved it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, fil film editing and uh, content uh, social editing are even there are kind of vastly different. Um, but uh, I just want to point out, Cody had a really good comment saying that the majority of the gen... Aww, See, you're on that's TV. Cute. That's right. <laughs> Sorry. On the YouTube. No. <laughs> so, yeah, Cody had a, a comment saying that a lot of the generation now is using uh, CapCut or uh, Filmora or all these other uh, tools which are free to an extent, but they try to do the heavy lifting of the creation process. People just have to put in the, the, the content and then it's doing most of the work for them. And I, that's a trend that's going to continue. It will become easier and easier to just fill, it, fill in the B-roll and the content and then AI will just be like, oh, you're trying to say this and just lay out the entire thing for you. Or you know, think three, four or five years from now, where you just do a text piece, it does your voice, it does your digital um, avatar, and then it literally out of thin air creates the B-roll to complement what you're saying. Like that's coming. So will, will those kind of things impact these major apps or are they going to kind of lead the way and add it to that? I think, um, there, there was a quote saying that, not a quote, but there was a video that came up about the rise of a, AI in video where even AI will get like 95% of the way there, but that last 5% will always require an artist touch to make it perfect, like film level perfect. Like AI will get you there, but like there, there'll be that little bit that will still be needed by humans, at least for the next little bit. 
next month. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that that's that's true, Kim. That would definitely take the fun out of editing. Um, there was there was an interview recently with um, Casey Neistat, Neistat, and he said that um, someone was asking him like, you know, do you use an editor or are you gonna hire an editor? And he goes, no, that's where that's where he builds his story in the edit, not while he's filming it. Like he knows kind of roughly what he wants to say, but he builds the story in the edit. And so people were asking him like, do you think AI is gonna be able to edit for you? And he goes, not the way I think unless the AI AI was built for me to think like me but even then there will be aspects that he would see that the AI would just regurgitate from videos from his past it wouldn't be fresh to him in his way of thinking so he's kind of against it but he's not he's not for it Uh, (laughs) I don't know uh like, I'm all in. I'm all in for this AI stuff when it helps me get the stuff that I want to get done faster. The green screen stuff, the audio cleanup, especially audio cleanup, mm-hmm. the um, AI auto color correction or color grading a whole project, not just one shot and then trying to m- mask it. It's like, no, I want this whole thing to match this. Um, so, so another question. Do you feel that, uh, there was a comment in the chat, do you feel that Apple will step up to the plate or do you think they're just going to be like, we're going to let DaVinci Resolve kind of handle it from here, from this level up? Do you think they're going to go more simplistic or do you think Apple will be like, hey, we can play too? What are your feelings on that? That's that's a tough one. I I am so optimistic and hopeful. Um, I think that they're gonna have to make a move fast if they want to retain any sort of market share because people are moving fast off of every NLE over to Resolve. So um, I think that they're gonna have to pick up the pace, but. I don't think they're going to leave us out to dry or however that phrase goes. I don't know. It's not my forte, but, um, but I, I do think that there's, there's high potential for stuff that's coming down the pipeline. Um, they've been known to hold back weight on certain products before they add in those features. They let everybody else fail. They figure out, okay, what works, what doesn't work. And then they, they come in and take those features and they make them even better and it that's why it just it it just works is because they they really take their time with it and i have a feeling that that might be the approach they're taking that's what the optimist in me says um but i do think that it's been long enough where they're going to have to take a step soon um otherwise they they will be losing more people and i don't i don't know if that's a big concern of theirs maybe they just they just want you to to buy the computer and they want to put their money directly into the MacBooks. But, um, but Final Cut Pro is a, it's a, I don't know, system seller, a, (laughs) a device seller. And, um, so I think it is important to meet those pro needs because you do have people that want to work in a professional workspace and they want to work with their MacBook Pro and get the most power out of it. So they need a tool that's going to utilize that. And if Resolve is, taking the cake on that then people can jump over to a pc for you know cheaper they can get a really specced out system and they can continue to update those parts so what's the reason to stick around on a macbook pro unless you've got a really great video editor that is mac only so i don't know i'm rambling at this point (laughs) i agree with you though i think i also feel kind of optimistic about the future i'm hoping that they give us some of the features we've been asking for for years and i also hope that they'll give us features we didn't know we wanted because they're mm. also known to do that right so hopefully they give us some of those those features we've been asking for like AM, um, af export omf export uh, better keyframe easing you know we, we've spoken about a lot of these features like if they could give us that and then a whole bunch of stuff we didn't know we needed um 
I think that's where they would really maybe hang on to some of that market share and maybe stop people jumping ship. Um, but that might not even be enough. But that, that would be enough to keep me, um, you know, on Final Fantasy. Well, if you look at it from Apple's standpoint, they have, what, a billion iPhones out in the wild that people are using, and they're using them to create content for all of the platforms. And it, they're usually short form. But Apple's I, iPhones will get better. Like their cameras are gonna get better and they're, they're adding all these pro features like cinematic mode and all that kind of stuff. So like they, they have the foresight. They knew that people are gonna create more and more with this. And if this is such a large user base that creates on their products, why wouldn't they also see that these are the next generation of people coming up that are going to want more tools to, to essentially skill stack and have that skill ceiling a little bit higher. Like unless unless they're they're willing to just forget about these and, and let third party developers create like fill in the gaps like they have been. And that's why they're they're already working well with DaVinci Resolve. It's like there's a part of me that kind of sus mm. suspects that they're they're leaking their code of the magnetic timeline slowly to DaVinci Resolve and just saying like, that's where the cut page is like, it's it's slowly morphing to it. Like, okay, you can't do it in one go, but just add this feature, add that feature. And then like, it'll slowly be, and then like one day it'll just be like, you know, Final Cut Pro is like, you know, we're, we're kind of um, discontinuing it and we've, we're fully behind DaVinci Resolve as the alternative and, you know, the simplified version of just the cut page and then just export. That's why you can now export from any page where you don't have to go to the export mm. page. Like that's a big, big jump where you can just open up in the cut page, export and you're done. Like you don't have to then learn anything else. So, and just to, to further that point, look at the biggest Final Cut channels that teach Final Cut, that are dedicated to teaching Final Cut. Like it maxes out at like 100,000. Like like beyond Peter Lindgren, who, who just uses Final Cut, but it's not a Final Cut channel. But then you look at DaVinci Resolve channels and they're getting huge because you have, in the entire world, you have Mac users, Windows users, and you know the the three Linux users that I'm sure are <laughs> loving it, um, but yeah, it's like like unless Final Cut becomes multi-platform, I don't see it getting too too advanced in the near future. Like it'll have to be either something where people can access it on on a Windows machine. Like that's the only way you'll be able to truly compete. Uh, especially at this point, like seeing what Premiere Pro is doing and what the AI tools that they're gonna be bringing in, which look fantastic, by the way. Like, I'm really excited about it. But they're multi-platform as well. So Apple is like, why are we gonna compete with these two giants that are really diving deep into it, where we can just let them bring these customers to us and we'll make the best machines where you can do a lot of this processing right on the machine. You don't have to then push it out to, you know, uh, expensive NVIDIA cards that cost more than a computer does. So yeah. that that's where I think Apple may kind of focus their energy and just like make the best machine. So there's there's no there's no competition where it's like for two, three thousand bucks, you have a machine that can do everything that these programs say they can do. You don't have to spend ten thousand dollars on a machine. And I think that's something that people get hung up on as well, where they start trying to use DaVinci Resolve's top end features. And they're like, why does not my $1,000 laptop work? Why is it, why is it taking forever? I thought this program was supposed to be fast. So anyways, that's, that's another thing that I keep hearing. I, I'm hopeful too, cause I use the software, but I literally have no idea what's coming. And like, I know Dylan's a pretty optimistic guy. So, uh, and, I would like to see more advanced stuff coming in, but we have no idea. And I think it was a telling sign that they released Resolve on iPad before they re released it with Final Cut Pro. Like that was, to me, that was kind of like a big deal that like we didn't get Final Cut on iPad. Not that I would probably use it, but 
I think that was a sign for that. I think the bigger question that I started to think about with this is that maybe we're, we shouldn't be thinking about Final Cut Pro versus Resolve. Like maybe Final Cut Pro is for that middle intermediate kind of creator. And a lot of us are trying to push it to another level when that's not really what it's designed for, like in terms of how it was built. Like maybe we just stop asking for this stuff and we use it as it is. And then if we need more advanced stuff like Matthew was talking about and Patrick, like that's what it resolves for. And it seems like Apple is kind of helping them with that. Like they're they're integrating it better. The computers are running really fast. Um, you know, they're making the machines that are able to support Resolve. I don't know my thoughts on that. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think I think you, that hits the nail on the head. You know, if you think about your user base in the shape of a triangle, where the high end pros are way up at the top of the triangle, and then every you know you got the base of it. You know, I think Apple really tries to aim for the middle. They really want that middle part of the triangle, the people that are touching on pro features, high end pro features, um, but then also just needing some really basic uh well thought out well designed um editing tools to just put motion pictures together to communicate meaning um and in my video about the future of final cut pro i you know i really feel like just as a business they're not focused on really bringing those high end features to make final cut pro pro um i don't think it necessarily makes a ton of sense for them as a business um uh, you know, they certainly like to use the prestige of having shows edited in Final Cut Pro or movies edited in Final Cut. They use that in the marketing materials and whatnot. Um, but I also think there was really a big shift when Steve Jobs left. Final Cut Pro was was one of Steve Jobs' babies. Like, this was something that really meant a lot to him. He bought Pixar. Like, Steve Jobs was yeah. really connected to filmmaking and motion picture storytelling. Yeah. Um, in animated forms, et cetera. And, you know, I just don't think it's as high of a priority in Tim Cook's mind. And you can see where Apple has moved towards services. Um, you know, now there's all this push with Apple, Apple cards and Apple savings account, all things that are designed to make it easier for us to buy Apple products. Um, and so I think Final Cut Pro isn't going to get removed from the ecosystem, but just just from the top down, I don't think that it's as much of a priority as it was in the Steve Jobs era. And we're, quote unquote, suffering as a result of that, where, you know, the last thing I'll say, Final Cut is doing everything I needed to, like all of the things I absolutely needed to, it does it. There are, of course, some little things I would like to be able to have more control over that I don't think make it Final Cut Pro Pro, some things to tidy things up to add some simple things. Um, just to make my workflow a little bit easier, especially with machine learning and um, the machine learning cores in the Apple Silicon. But I'm very happy with the application. Um, and uh, I think I will be for the next five plus years, unless these new features that come in with auto transcribing and auto captioning and, and different machine learning things to help with uh, assistant editing and whatnot, um, uh, I'm going to be okay with my YouTube videos with, with just Final Cut Pro. Yeah, I think like that's a, a really <laughs> big deal. I'm just old enough. Like I was, I think, a junior in high school when Final Cut Pro X came out. And like that is a surprisingly like vivid and visceral memory, like the fallout from that. And like I, I like Final Cut. I have honestly only dabbled, but like from the outside, I'm a big fan of Final Cut. I think it has in all ways earned its redemption from that period. And like, I would recommend it all over the place. And I, I think there is a little bit of just like the rate of development on Resolve has been wild. Like it's, it's ridiculous to look at where Resolve was six, seven, eight years ago. And I, I think understandably anything compared to that feels like it's moving crazy slow and even if final cut is moving very slow but like if you compare the development on premiere over the last five years to final cut it probably doesn't feel as bad and i do think even that development on resolve it is a lot but largely outside of just like acquiring fusion and fairlight and tossing them in there largely i feel like we are finally getting to the point of like parody on a lot of features for a lot of editors uh even though the auto transcribe and text-based stuff text-based was even newer but even the auto transcribe has been around for like maybe like a year in premiere 
that was a, like the last holdout feature for a lot of people moving over from Premiere. And like now it's there. So I think from this point on is like a lot of question marks, but a lot of like really exciting. Like, okay, like, hey, Black Magic, you got here. What do you actually want to prioritize and do next? And uh, on one hand, like, do they need to? It's like, no, no. At this point, like, Resolve could stay as it is and be really great for a long time. I don't think they're going to because I think <laughs> they they want to do what they want to do and they always have and they're just going to run for it. Um, but I also think, like, I actively, I mean, I, I recommend Resolve a lot. But, like, I don't dissuade anyone from, like, using Final Cut. And I know it's, like, a phenomenal tool for a lot of people who just need to do what they need to do really fast. I would love to, you know, dive in and get up to speed on it. But Fusion is still giant, so I'll be diving in for a while. <laughs> well, I'm, like, my my kind of bread and butter every day is After Effects. After Effects, Cinema 4D, um, so they have nothing to do with editing. And I, I've heard people edit in After Effects, which just like, like why? <laughs> like, that just makes no sense. Um, but like I have the entire Adobe suite and I haven't opened, I don't open uh, Premiere Pro if I don't have to. But I know that it got a lot of slack over the last couple of years for its crashing. It's actually a lot better than it was. And I know that there's going to be a, uh, kind of a, a tipping point where Premiere Pro knows that it it has to play the same kind of game that DaVinci Resolve is doing, where they have to be they have to show like they're innovating, but they they have to reframe the mindset that their application is stable. So I know that they're working hard on it, and they're trying to add in all these features. It time will tell. But when it comes down to just the basic editing points, it it doesn't matter which editor you use when it comes down to it. It has to be something that you're comfortable with and it doesn't get in the way of what you are actually doing. So if you want something that is very streamlined, Final Cut is probably the best way to go for in and out. You drop your footage in, you cut down the pieces, you just tweak it a little bit and then you're out. But the moment you need to start adding in those graphics without plugins, Final Cut Pro isn't much. You can do kind, you can kind of do everything in it, but the keyframing is terrible. The, the 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 titles you have to learn how to build titles and how to um, be a motion graphics designer to have something good. So templates and all, all these plugins that you know a lot of people have bought, and there was a comment saying that the biggest holdout for a lot of people switching from Final Cut to DaVinci Resolve is that they've already spent two, three grand on plugins to bring Final Cut up to speed. Now, if they switched over, if they could bring a lot of those plugins from Motion um, VFX, which Motion VFX won't do a one-for-one -one trade, um, I, I don't see why they couldn't just license it and then just swap the license. That would be an awesome feature. Mm -hmm. And then people would still be using it, right? Because like a lot of people don't want to buy the same thing twice. It's kind of like buying DaVinci Resolve once, you know, and then like they do an update. It's like, well, I don't want to buy it again. Like the reason I paid for it the first time was because I'm committed. I'm all in on it. And Motion VFX has great plugins. So it's like if there was a reactivation, like, hey, swap that for this. And, you know, maybe limit it to you can choose five. And that's it. And like, you know, once you've gone through your five, you know, choose your, and then the rest are, you know, maybe a discount, but. Well, so I don't know if I told Dylan or, or Matthew this when they stopped by the booth. Um, so like my, my day job, I work for Motion VFX. Oh, um, well, there you go. I did not know I, that. I work on their team specifically moving stuff over to resolve infusion so like i look at something something someone made in fusion i build it from scratch in or made in uh motion i build it from scratch in fusion um and cool. i'll like yeah one it's it's great learning a lot it's all this other stuff and like two there's a fair amount of time we're able to add some like really cool functionality especially like with graphs and data visualization and that sort of stuff um there is they don't publicize it 
but they're i believe i might have to double check this but i, I believe there is an existing discount on any product you own for Final Cut if you want to get it on Resolve. That is just a discount, but it's still a discount if you like. And also, if you've bought a few packs, you probably know which packs you really want or want to pick right. up first. So even if it's just a few, uh, people have tons of different ideas about, you know, like small a la carte stuff, which I don't think they would do because that's sort of their big bread and butter is, is big packs. But like they, they know and like they're actively like investing in that space in some cool ways. Speaking of Motion VFX, let's do a giveaway. I have a $100 gift card from Motion VFX that we're going to give away. And the game is simple. Uh, give me one second. The game is simple. It's choosing a number between 1 and 1,000. So everyone that's in the chat, you put in your number. I'm going to hit start. We're going to... Whatever, whoever is closest to that number wins a $100 gift card from Motion VFX. We're going to do uh, two more giveaways. Uh, after this one. Um, so yeah, just put in your numbers for your guess. Closest number between 1 and 1,000. And I'm going to play some music. And once the music stops, <laughs> that's when that's when the... So let me start that. Here we go. I'm going to play the music once the music stops. Yeah, there we go. Putting on a show now. <laughs> <laughs> so the... Person closest to the number wins a hundred dollar gift card from Motion VFX, courtesy of Motion VFX. If they want to use it on Resolve yeah. stuff, I have some recommendations. Oh, there you go. <laughs> nice. Music's almost done. Links. <laughs> That's right. We're gonna all have okay. to use our math skills to try to ascertain who's closest. And two ninety six. Chad, help me out. Who is oh, closest? Okay. I see Cole. I see Cole at 283. 283. Where's 283? Oh, yeah. So, go first, the, off. the first number only. 283. Is that the closest one? 283. I think so. <laughs> Joffrey put in 296. Ho, ho, ho. Nice try, Joffrey. <laughs> <laughs> I think 283. All the right, there. One. Congratulations. You have won a $100 gift card from Motion VFX. Uh, make sure you hit me up on Instagram. Uh, find me there. DM me, and then I'll get you that gift card. All right, let's move on. So, yeah. Uh, that was fun. Thanks, guys. Is it just Raphael um, Ludwig on Instagram? R-A-F-A-E-L Ludwig? Uh, Raph Ludwig. Raf Ludwig on Raph Ludwig. Instagram. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, if you go to my page, it's it's on the banner. I didn't put it in the. It's probably in the description as well. Probably, I don't remember. But yeah. anyways, yeah. So we have two more, uh, two more giveaways, right? Uh, coming up soon. But yeah. So, uh, what was the other thing? Yeah. So we talked about AI. We talked about that. Um, uh, people have commented saying will apple buy black magic or will they sell final <laughs> cut i don't think any that's of that's going to happen point. yeah no yeah um well i think as, as all these nles fight for market share you know what you guys were touching on early when i stepped away you know uh, how all these motion vfx plugins for final cut keep you locked in final cut if you're a premiere editor and you love how you can go from premiere to after effects with dynamic linking and you're doing a lot of heavy After Effects work, but you're not ready to switch over to Fusion or your partners that you work with can't understand Fusion file, all that kind of stuff. Some people are gonna have to deal with Premiere because of After Effects. And then of course, if you're a feature film editor or a high level documentary editor, you're gonna be locked into Avid. Avid helps also with turnover to Pro Tools for sound mixing. Um, uh, and, and I think that you know, there's there's a lot uh, going on with Resolve to try to grab that market share. They brought in Fairlight. They brought in Fusion. They are saying, like, we know that that color grading um, with Resolve is the industry standard at, at the highest level. Um, how do we start bringing all of these other apps into the ecosystem so we can grab as much market share for that as well? And I think they're just, you know, on this very steep um rise right now where apple you know still is 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 doing new things they're bringing in new products and all that stuff but post-production software is just such a low priority for them where for black magic 
it is an essential part of a larger ecosystem with their hardware products, their camera products, all that stuff. So it's just a really fascinating time to be in to see all these companies trying to grab market share with like Avid giving um, a college discount now. If you're in college, uh, you either get it for free or a very, very steep discount to be able to use Avid Media Composer. Um, so yeah, that, that type of competition means that we all win in a sense. So uh, I'll keep it going. What's yeah. Avid? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, Purple. I am a... Yeah. <laughs> I'm able well, to I... fully recognize. Oh, no, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I am able to fully recognize that I'm like fully uh, a resolve and like black magic fanboy, but like they make it really easy. And even like at a company level there, there's an incredible interview that Grant Petty, the CEO of black magic did with Forbes. I recommend it all over the place. Cause he's like very blunt. He's very bold. Their company has never taken outside investment. Like they've always maintained a profitable and they're just like, so I don't know, like you, you, it's, I feel like you can actually feel sort of like their conviction and their goal. And now that's sort of been a double-edged sword of they're going to do whatever they want to do. And like, if that's not the one thing you want them to do, you're out of luck, but like, they're going to do something new and it's probably going to be pretty cool. Um, but I also saw people talking about like, will they eventually go subscription? And like Grant has been. Uh, very blunt about how he feels about like cloud licensing and software as a service and what that does to creative people who can like lose access to their past work if they stop paying a monthly amount and he he does not like that well the biggest thing that black magic has over adobe is that they're a hardware company first but uh, davinci resolve is just like hey this is a cool add-on and so they've, they've bought all these, like apparently they bought Fairlight for like next to nothing. And Fairlight used mm -hmm. to sell for $10,000 a license. Like this was like huge. And so when they put it in, they're just like, yeah, just slap it in there and like give it away for free. And because they know that they're attracting um, these users that are gonna buy their cameras, they're gonna buy their streaming stuff, they're gonna buy their capture devices, they're gonna buy all these crazy expensive, you know, controllers and whatever like they that's where they're making the money so then they're able to shift like well let's give the people that are using our tools a tool that helps them use the mm. the our cameras properly and grade it and make it all look great so that like it's a one-stop solution but with that being said do they have the developer horsepower that apple does or the adobe does to come out of the gate with um, AI features that are just like, mm. like I know when Apple turns on the AI switch for their creative apps, it's gonna be like, other companies are gonna be like, oh shit, like how are we competing with this? Like Google is Apple's biggest AI competitor, not Adobe. So when it comes to machine learning and having access to, you know, millions and millions of video files that they can, tr uh, train their systems, they can do that all internally. Um, and depending on how you set up your uh, iPhone or capture devices, if you gave Apple permission to share data, well, they're using that to train their, their systems in the background. So when they hit the ground, they're gonna hit the ground, not running, but like, you know, it's gonna be a rocket car kind of blasting forward. Uh, and other companies are gonna be like, oh, okay, let's, uh, shit, we gotta do something too. Um, but you know, it'll, everyone will be like, yeah, but black magic or DaVinci Resolve has had that for four years. It's like, well, yes, but you know, like it's going to be what black magic is doing now, not what black magic was doing three years ago, just because it implemented sooner. Apple, as Dylan was saying earlier, they have that tendency of taking their time and literally slapping in at a ready to go mm -hmm. product. They don't iterate too much except for final cut when it first came out uh final cut pro that's uh that was a misstep <laughs> so let's do another giveaway this one is for time bolt um if you guys know what time bolt is oh, this yeah. is uh, 
Yeah, uh, there's a, a lifetime license for Time Bolt. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. Going to bring up the numbers. First person closest, and it's your first guess. So if you do a second guess, and uh, Caleb, don't uh, whoever has won in the past or in the previous one can't win again. So I'm just bringing that up right now. Um, and we actually missed. There was a uh, Caleb had 291, so he was actually closer. Uh, so uh -huh. I'm, he's going to get a gift card as well. Uh, so both of you guys hit me up. So yeah, uh, you guys Dang can it. start. How did we miss that, Caleb? Well, uh, he he put in twenty twenty nine point one k because that's how many subscribers oh. I had. So I that yeah, he oh, did that uh, I see, I in see. the last yeah, stream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the numbers are going. When the music stops, who's hey Raf? Did Time Bolt update to multicam support? for yes. their feature or okay they they're the ones that did i know there's a couple like recut and a couple of other apps that do this but i saw time bolt added multicam and i was like finally i can use it yep they yeah. added multicam for final cut pro and they're adding multicam for they're in the process of adding multicam for davinci resolve and 868 who is the closest for oh first one i saw Jay was, johnson's uh, 854 I got, oh, 854. I got uh, 896. 854. Do we, chat, you guys help us out. I'm going to wait. I think 854 might be closest. 854 looks like the closest. Anyone else? Anyone else? 854. Where's 854? Why can't I see it? Uh, kind Johnson. of in the middle. Yeah, Jay Johnson, green, green avatar. Jay Johnson. 854 looking for it i can't see it i believe you guys i need to find it let me find it so we got one more <laughs> giveaway and the next giveaway is for um from dylan he generously is donating <gasps> some of his plugins <gasps> yeah so we're gonna wait 854 come on man where is it do, it's do, just do, all do. of them okay I, I can't find it but it's here <laughs> i i believe you guys <laughs> uh, J. Johnson, eight. There it is. There it is. 854. Beautiful. Congratulations. Oh, you can search. You you can search for those comments in Ecamm too, Raph. Stop telling me Come how on, to buddy. do it. Uh, I'm just going to be <laughs> embarrassed doc now. on stream. <laughs> That's right. You are right. All right. So I'm going to just take that off. Yeah. So Jay, make sure you guys hit me up on uh, Instagram. Link is in somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. So what were we talking about? We're talking about Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve and other things but yeah it's okay so what would be can, can i just real quick real quick ref yes. sorry to interrupt i gotta split because i gotta get lunch for the kiddo and transition but i just uh, wanted this to say was a thanks for having for me you. on <laughs> oh was okay. it okay real quick yeah, real quick real quick I, go for it i want to know what would be the final straw that would make you and anyone that uses final cut jump and i know for you it's a big deal because it is your bread and butter that's yeah it's a question for you that would like <sighs> I mean, like if Apple changed Final Cut to a subscription, I don't know that that would be a deal breaker for me because, you know, I earn, you know, good revenue from Final Cut Pro and I have for the $300 I paid for it, what, 11, 10, 11 years ago. So that's not something. I think for me, if I got to a point where Resolve really made that cut page feel very, very similar to Final Cut, and they were adding in a lot of the AI features that I, I, the features that where you say to yourself, I didn't know I needed this, but now that I have it, I can't live without it. If they did enough of those and Apple just kind of stagnated and stuck with the magnetic timeline, the browser, the stability and reliability, and they weren't adding, adding meaningful features like that, where you went, again, I didn't know I needed this, but now I can't live without it. I think that would make me consider switching um, it would be tough because if my whole channel's identity is Final Cut Pro, that's another big obstacle in keeping me with Final mm. Cut Pro. Switching over, but you referenced earlier how some of these Resolve channels have way more, uh, way larger followings than Final Cut channels do. Not that that would motivate me to switch, um, but I think if you combine those factors, you know, two, three, four years from now, and we're just seeing stability under the hood improvements, very basic changes to Final Cut while Resolve is really going leaps and bounds beyond what Final Cut is, 
I think that if I reach that breaking point, that's what would make me make me switch, I think. Yeah. So Josh? before everybody else oh, answers, Go I'm yeah. gonna I'm, I'm gonna jump out. <laughs> um, Matt, Goldie keeps asking thank you. for lunch, so yep. yeah, thank you everyone, <laughs> and appreciate everyone tuning in. Um, thanks uh, for hosting, Raph, Dylan, Brad, Josh, uh, Patrick. Great meeting you at NAB, and um, you guys enjoy the rest of the stream. And I will talk to you all later. Okay, Matthew, thank you. See Bye you, for Matthew. now. Right. See hey, keep chopping that broccoli, fellas. <laughs> 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 See ya. So, Josh, I'm turning to you now. What would be, yeah. I think it would be easier for you. You'd just be like, I'm just going to DaVinci Resolve. <laughs> would, it, would it be that simple? I think I would have to invest a lot of time until I was at the mm. proficiency level that I need to. And so there's a, like a delay in productivity uh, or I'd have to take away time from something else that I'm working on. And I think that that's tricky. And I think that's also like when people say they switch camera brands, it's like you can't just like be doing professional work and then switch to another brand and just be up to speed completely and get the same consistency and quality and level of output. So for me, there would be a time commitment there. I think the reason or the last straw, or whatever you want to say, would be if like the complexity of my work changed in which I absolutely needed a lot of the features in DaVinci. I think that would force me to, to switch. I also think that uh, if we are a year or two, I don't have a, a specific timeline down the road where we see whatever the next iteration of Final Cut is. Like, if there isn't significant improvements, like, I'm in this for the long term. Like, I need to force myself to get better as a creator and as a filmmaker, videographer, content creator to, like, use what is common, what is going to be the best option for me down the road. I mean, I know yeah. in my heart, like, I, I think when we're seeing, like, Da Vinci and Final Cut and they, and, like, where they fit in the marketplace like i said earlier i also think about resolve they're just like adding everything possible on a regular basis i know patrick probably chime in on this too but like i look at the camera i look at hardware and software too and they're not mutually exclusive but like black magic has in terms of camera gear has really not brought out a lot in the last few years and i see a lot more of the emphasis on production and resolve and that sort of stuff like at nab like we, i was hoping for a new camera and like they yeah. i mean we didn't really see much. So like for me, I'm like, I want to go with those guys because they're putting the most into the editing software for editing software. That's just how I feel about it. But for me right now, like my needs are met. Like I can't really complain with Final Cut uh, other than having a few more features, of course. Is that what you're looking for, Rob? <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It's like, I want to find out what that, that switching point, that tipping point would be for people to be like, okay, that I have to move over to something else. But like, it's like full commitment at that point. Like mm. I'm going all in. So Brad, I think for, for you? me, if, if we reached a point where Apple said, okay, we're, we're done with Final Cut, no more updates, that would be, I mean, I'd jump ship immediately. I wouldn't want to invest my time in something that's no longer going to be updated. But mm -hmm. I'm also very heavily invested in Final Cut Pro in terms of plugins, my workflows. Um, I turn around a lot of client work and I don't really have the time to learn something else. So like what Josh was saying, I'd have to find time, take time from somewhere else to, to get up to speed mm -hmm. in order to be able to do the things in Resolve, for example, that I can do in Final Cut. So there's definitely some sort of transition period that would be needed. But the tipping point for me in a nutshell would be them no longer updating the app. If Apple decides you're not updating it, that would be it. But it's it's a bit more complicated. You know, if, if I had to elaborate on that, it would be a few things. It would be lack of features, um, a subscription model. All those kind of things would kind of eventually take its toll and it mm. would make me want to jump ship. But if it was just one thing, it would it would be that they said we're not doing any more updates. So Dylan. I think you're kind of in the same boat as Matthew, where it's like your your whole identity, especially the social identity, is anchored to Final Cut. So, what would be the what would be the the tipping point for you? You know, I don't I don't use Final Cut that often. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so, man, it, it's tough. I exactly what Brad said. Like, if Apple just came out and said, you know what? Final Cut Pro, we're we're done backing it. Um, I would I would jump in a heartbeat. It wouldn't be a difficult decision for me at that point. Um, if Black Magic, if they wanted to sign on and pay me a million dollars a year, that would also help. Uh, <laughs> no, um, 
But uh, no, I I don't know. It's difficult because what I do in editing, my channel doesn't really actually showcase my general editing style. Um, my channel's more flashy and graphic animations and stuff. But generally, my editing style is very cut and dry, you know, just basic cuts and basic dissolve transitions. And that's kind of my bread and butter. Um and Final Cut, like Josh said, just it does what I need and it does it really well. It does it really fast, which is extremely important to me. I think a key feature I would need to see in Resolve would just be um, a perfect one-to-one -one magnetic timeline. I think that would be a really key feature that would would maybe be the tipping point because cause the magnetic timeline is just that good. And Resolve's getting there. They're doing great with their the toggle on for the ripple delete and stuff. But there's there's just something about the magnetic timeline that's not quite there in Resolve. And I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's just because I lack of experience, honestly. But um, but I I would just need that perfect one to one before it'd be like, all right, maybe. <laughs> that said, I love working in Resolve, and and I think it. It's just a, a stellar program, and uh, and I've even I I've talked about it in the Discord and stuff. I've considered starting a secondary channel where I I'm just the Da Vinci Resolve guy, um, just because I love working in the software and I I think it's got a ton of potential and I think that would just honestly be more fun for me than than anything. I don't know that it would be a matter of switching. You'd just be like, why not do both? So. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. There's not a single one thing, but having that one-to-one -one magnetic timeline would would make it a lot more tempting. <laughs> okay, you heard it here first, folks. We're going from the Final Cut bro to the Da Vinci dude. He's coming. <laughs> so Patrick, I'm gonna flip that question for you and be like, what would be, what would make you walk away from Da Vinci Resolve? to Premiere Pro, to Avid, to go to Nuke instead of uh, Fusion. What would be the thing that would make you go, yeah, I, this is not this is not for me anymore? Hypothetical. Make Ooh, imaginary. Yeah, hypothetical. What's the worst case scenario? Be, it, would have to be some, it would have to be something on par with them coming out and saying, like, they're abandoning work on Final Cut. It would have to be, like, that level of, like, maybe, like, maybe Blackmagic does sell to someone... I don't know if a subscription fee would be quite enough because mm. I think I tell people all the time, I think the free version is worth the $300 people pay for the studio version. <laughs> um, I agree. But, especially like, yeah, m my day job is plugin development. And even like as a personal brand, I, my, my, I like my channel. We're, we're getting somewhere, but I also make and develop plugins and presets personally. And that's a much bigger deal than my channel. Um, so it's, yeah on, oh, yeah, on all the business side, I can't do, I could always develop like After Effects Mogurts, but. But who would it, want to, honestly? No. And Yogurts. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just like, I can do that in something that feels more new, more exciting. I'm like part of an emerging scene for that. Um, it, it got, no, absolutely. Yeah, know. It's just, and it's, even, uh, it, yep. Go well, ahead. a lot of people don't realize, um, it's like also a, a super small thing, but like on the main support page for black magic, you can download every past version of resolve. Hmm. So it's not hmm. just like, like, sure. They could always like take that down, but like the, even the installations for all those past ones would s probably still be out there and work like it. I can't imagine any way that like resolve actually goes away. They can't just like remove it from the storefronts and stuff because it's out there as like independent executables and physical copies and yeah, even <laughs> so uh, maybe if they, I don't know, fusion inside resolve still feels like such like a sleeper hit and it's going to be the key to so much potential going forward because even people who don't want to dive into fusion, I can make you something in Fusion, and you just see it as a drag-and-drop effect on the edit page. Like, Fusion will pay dividends 
for thousands and thousands of people who never touch it. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's kind of like Motion, where so many mm. plugins are created, and a lot of, most people don't even buy or open Motion ever in their life. Um, and and the the thing that people a lot of people don't even understand about Fusion is that that's not the full version of Fusion. There is a standalone app that is more involved, that is more Sorry. powerful, that can, well. Well, I haven't checked it out, but I, I know that they have their own standalone version that can that is more primed for high end uh, production. Yes. So it's more catered to that. Where the one that's in Fusion is, they try to simplify it a little bit for people that are trying to navigate around it. But so, like I would hands down, I I highly recommend everyone learn DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut and Premiere because. It, again, it's the skill stacking that's going to make you more valuable than the piece of software mm -hmm. that you're able to, to use. Because even in this discussion where what would be the tipping point for people to switch, switch over, if you have already dabbled in the other ones, it's not a big leap to be like, within, within a week, you're going to be up and running and be as proficient. Like bring your um, keyboard shortcuts, know where everything is, and just be able to set it up, you're going to have way more success knowing all the applications than just knowing one and kind of being the, the die hard and like, ah, this is, this is it. I, it's ride or die with this app. And it's like, no, just learn it. And if the tools make your job easier, use that tool. And it really comes down to understanding the art of creating, not just editing, but the art of creating. And, how to get people, how to get an emotional reaction from people. That's more important than the plugins or the tools that you use. Um, let's do that last giveaway because we're wrapping it up. So Dylan, uh, if you want to talk about what is in the package you're going to be uh, giving away, then uh, yeah, I'll start the numbers and then yeah, you guys can put in your number one to 1000 and as the music plays, Dylan's gonna tell you about the plugin pack for Final Cut Pro. So if you think it's DaVinci Resolve, just back off. Just back off, man. <laughs> yeah, right. so behind go. door number one. Um, no, uh, basically it's just all of the plugins I've created. You can see them on my store on uh, Gumroad. I've got Zoom plugins. I've got picture and picture plugins. I've got shape plugins, just a whole bunch of them. And that shape plugin actually has a bunch of built-in animations and stuff. So I'm just going to throw everything at you. And uh, hopefully that'll get you editing faster in Final Cut. That's the idea, I guess. Nice. Get your numbers in. 1 to 1,000, closest number. And here we go. That's a stop. 781. Who is the closest up until... Oh, I see. Let's see. 781. 747, maybe? 747. The yeah, there I it is. See seven, I see 750. Oh, there... uh, 750? 750. Leonardo? Oh. Is that his first guess? Or did yeah, he... Oh, be... he threw in a, bu he threw in a no, bunch of guesses. It has to be your first guess. Rules of the game. Be... I think 747 might have it. I, I don't know so, when yeah. some of these chat messages came in. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I know which one was the last message that came in. But yeah, seven, 747. So that plugins the from the Da Vinci. Yeah, plugins from the Da Vinci dude. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Da Vinci Brozolve. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so, uh, Gert, make sure you reach out to me on the... Um, Instagram, uh, DM me in the in the back end of it, and then uh, yeah, I'll get you. Uh, I'll put you in touch with. Uh, I'll send all that info to Dylan so he can take care of that. But yeah, uh, yeah, I just kind of want to wrap it up, and and kind of just thank you guys for being part of this discussion. A lot of people are switching over to DaVinci Resolve. I do feel that there will be a huge wave back of people saying, I'm, I went back to Premiere Pro or switching, 
switching to Premiere Pro, um, especially in the next year, because the things that Adobe has kind of teased and announced, if they follow through on those things, there's some pretty, pretty spectacular things that are going to be competing very nicely with DaVinci Resolve. So anyone that has used Premiere Pro in the past, I do feel that there's going to be a big wave going back out from DaVinci Resolve, especially people that find out how complex DaVinci Resolve can be when they try to do the stuff. Like if, if people are used to using uh, Lumetri for color, and then they go to DaVinci Resolve, it's like, it's a mind warp. It's like, where are my sliders? I want, you know, the color balance and different things that just are different in DaVinci Resolve. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how the next year pans out. But yeah, I just wanted to say thank you guys for being part of this. Uh, any final thoughts on? Um, just that um, I wouldn't mind. I, I whipped up a little promo code if you want to share the love with some Resolve stuff. Yeah, um, you want to do, do another? You want to do another? We can number depending on how you want to do it. I have it set up as a limited number of uses on just like a a, a, a flat deal if we want to leave it up to the fates and just. Drop well, it. Uh, how many? Because then Every we can do like three. Give... Yeah, because uh, then uh, it's like let's 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 let people let's in, during the live stream. Yeah, let's run it. Okay. So uh, cool. Yeah, I'll we, do. We can do any number you want to do, and we'll like if you want to do three, if you want to do two, five. You, yeah, you tell us the number. Three. Then... All right. So get Six three winners. Thousand. Three for like a what like a flat 20 bucks off whatever you want sure sure not a problem cool. that's fun um yeah and then um i don't know just as a side as a side promo if you lose i have a few dozen free presets <laughs> he does there you go and they're right, good so presets so numbers are going music is playing this is welcome to the final cut showdown <laughs> once the music stops we can get two three lucky winners to get stuff from patrick's store this is awesome thank you patrick yeah it's fun i've i've been leaning into discount codes and they're pretty fun and we got stuff three eight seven three eighty seven three eighty seven thirty five there's a three sixty five there Ooh. So it has to be the first one. Just double check. It's the first one. So 335 from Paul. That's one. There's like 365 from word, wordplay. wordplay. Wordplay 365. And one more. What's who's the next one? I think I saw Mr. Camera Junkie with 426. 426. Anyone else? I think that's it. Nice. All right. Yeah, guys, reach out to me on the on Instagram, on the DM, and I will put you in touch with Patrick. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for being part of this conversation today. I've been wanting to do this for a while. Uh, there was a few more people that were supposed to join today, but uh, due to technical issues, they weren't able to participate. I'm looking at you, Brandon. I'm looking at you, Brandon. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and there's a few other people that just, they couldn't make it last minute, which is no problem. We'll do another one. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe to everyone that's been part of this conversation. They are fantastic creators that I enjoy following and just knowing. So guys, thank you so much for participating and you guys have a great rest of their day and everyone that's been participating in the conversation. You guys are awesome. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye guys. Yeah. Bye. Peace. See ya.